It's been a big day in foreign affairs, as we know. The Albanese government has not sent additional personnel to assist our allies in the Red Sea. They vowed to triple the presence in the, reg presence in the region. Now, the Australian newspaper reported today that that's not yet happened. The PM later today said that uh, the timeline is that it will happen at the end of the month. Michael Shoebridge from Strategic Analysis Australia joins me. Uh, Michael, I guess they did promise the end of the month, but given what we're doing is going from, what, three people to... 13 or something based in Bahrain, I mean, what would be the hold-up? Steve, this is just getting more and more underwhelming from the government the more we see of it. This, is, this really should be about when is an Australian Navy warship joining the Red Sea and now Gulf of Aden uh, security mission to stop the Houthis disrupting international trade. Instead, we're hearing that it, it takes over a month to move a dozen people from Australia to Bahrain. Um, I just cannot see how this can be taken seriously as a contribution to a very fast-moving international security issue. How is it possible it takes a month to move a dozen people? So let's not be distracted here. We've got the foreign minister touring the region saying Australia has a real voice and ideas around ending the conflict. And on defence, the government looks all hat, no ranch. Well, you know, you know this better than me, but in the past, we've moved military assets of much more significance than, you know, eight public servants into Bahrain within days. We, we've sent uh, special forces soldiers into Afghanistan on missions. We've... I mean, Help me out here. I mean, we're being gaslit by the government on this, aren't we? Yes, it is. It's it, um, When the government came to power, they said they'd be much more transparent and much more open. But we get all these announcements, and then a little while later, you find out the announcement is like an aero bar. You know, it's a whole lot of bubbles that make it really something. It's These are empty policy gestures without content. So... Defence personnel are on limited notice to move because they need to do things quickly. So there's no way it should take a month to send a dozen people overseas. I mean, what if there is an actual crisis in our region? Will the government be able to move more quickly? Let's talk about the the, uh, the conflict itself, particularly what the Houthis are up to. They've hit a US-owned ship, as we know, just off the coast of Yemen. How close is this to becoming an escalation of what's unfolded so far in the Middle East? Well, it is escalating, Steve, because the Houthis are moving from sending missiles and drones into the Red Sea to widening their operations now and threatening the Gulf of Aden, shipping in the Gulf of Aden. That's where that US ship was struck. Luckily, uh, it's been able to continue on its way. It seems to have hit an empty compartment in, in the uh, cargo ship's hold. But numbers matter when you're dealing with the Houthis. So the, the contribution Australia could be making to this maritime protection force gets more important as the Houthis broaden their area of attacks. More ships from more nations are needed to keep international shipping safe. And it's not as if uh, we don't have some skin in the game. I mean, that shipping route uh, is responsible for so much world trade that it's clearly going to put the price up of goods that we would bring in because they're going to have to divert uh, around, around the Suez Canal and come around the long way. Yes, and they're doing that, and we will see international prices rise because of the amount of global trade that goes through there. Extra shipping costs will percolate across a whole lot of goods and services that Australian consumers purchase. And this idea that we don't have a stake in it, I wonder what the foreign minister is doing touring Middle Eastern states if Australia has no stake in that part of the world. The disconnect between foreign policy and defence policy on this from the government is quite jarring. What's it done to our alliance with the US? Well, the UK has proved they can move very quickly. They sent HMS Diamond right there straight away, much faster than it seems our defence people can pack their bags and get their passports in order. So the UK looks like a real activist ally of the US. 
And we look like when they ask for something, we underwhelm. We say we'll send people and then it turns out they don't turn up. It's a complete embarrassment to Australia and to Australians. Michael Shoebridge from Strategic Analysis Australia. Always uh, great to pick your brains.